The 7th Annual Cajun Nationals at State Capitol Raceway near Baton Rouge, Louisiana. This sprawling facility filled to overflowing with race fans from throughout the United States who came south for one reason, and that is speed. And these fans have not been disappointed throughout qualifying. Some of the most spectacular action that has been recorded in drag racing history has taken place right here in Baton Rouge. In qualifying, Don Prudhomme, the former four-time world champion, brings his new Pontiac Trans Am to the starting line against Trip Shoemake. Shoemake with problems off the starting line. He brings the car under control, but Don Prudhomme has no problems. The fastest run by a funny car in history. Yeah, I had that ever-loving feeling today about it. The car <laughs> run 43 yesterday, and we're the first ones to run 240. It's nice to be the one to run, first one to run 250, regardless of what Beetle does. <laughs> and you just took the number one spot from Beetle with still one session to go. Decent, yeah, I'm real happy about that. But Raymond's no slouch. We're going to have a tough race. Okay, congratulations again. That could be a national record if you back it up. I think that's dynamite. Thank you. All right, and bonus points that go with that towards the World Championship. I haven't seen the snake smile like this in a long time. Coming back after a horrendous fire, the last race of 1981, 250 miles an hour. Don Prudhomme has not had a good season for the past couple of years, but a happy man he is. NHRA rules require a backup run. Within 1%, Don Prudhomme must run to establish that 250 mile an hour pass as the new national record. Here in the final qualifying session, it is Don Prudhomme against Raymond Beetle. Prudhomme, the number one qualifier. He must run within 1% of 250 miles an hour. And he does at 247 miles an hour plus, Don Prudhomme establishes a new national speed record for funny cars. Hello, everybody. I'm Dave McClelland, along with Steve Evans. For the fourth year, Diamond P Sports is bringing you coverage of the exciting Cajun Nationals. The engines are running. We're ready to go with the first round of Top Fuel Eliminator. The first race today finds the longtime veteran Gene Snow matched against the rising young superstar Mark Oswald driving for the team of Candies and Hughes. He may be new to this car, but Mark Oswald has already driven over 252 miles an hour. For Gene Snow, it's a return to the driver's seat. From Fort Worth, Texas, he is one of the great stars of the 60s in championship drag racing, coming back a couple of years ago. Mark Oswald, starting out this season at the wheel of the candies in Hughes car, has already established a new national speed record. Both cars ready for the start as they come into the staging beans. It is Gene Snow against... Candies and Hughes, Mark Oswald driving. A good race to this point, but Mark Oswald starts to pull away, and by several car lengths, Mark Oswald wins it. 5.90 second elapsed time. A hometown crowd cheering the speed of over 247 miles an hour. So Candies and Hughes from Homa, Louisiana, just about 40 miles away from Baton Rouge, win their first round race. The next match finds Mark Niver driving for Johnny Loper against Shirley Muldowney. Mark Niver starting in top fuel racing this season with the car of Johnny Loper from Phoenix, Arizona, will be racing the only person ever to win the top fuel world championship two times, Shirley Muldowney. Her son, John, backing her up after the burnout Getting set for this race with Mark Niver. Wait, you race Mark Niver first round. How do you approach that? I'm not worried about it. That's what you mean. And then where do we go? Second round. Who do you feel you think? Second favorite? round, I think we'll see who will be there. Uh, and uh, I think the pink car is going to win the race. You've had three top fuel races in your career. All three have been against Shirley. She's beat you all three times. And here she says, you're no problem first round. Well, I hope that isn't true. We'll see. Uh, we had some tuning up to do. We ran during the heat of the day and ran good. So we're optimistic. I don't know. Yeah, we're optimistic. He'd best be optimistic because Mark Niver, driving for Johnny Loper, has got his work cut out for him as he races Shirley Muldowney, the winningest woman in motorsports history. Two-time world champion. She has taken on the best and defeated all of them. 
But now, her thoughts are on this race and this race alone as Mark Niver will be trying to pull off the upset of the event thus far. And Mark Niver has some problems off the starting line. Shirley Baldani through the finish line. Some smoke out of the car indicating possible internal engine damage. But for Shirley, a big win, 5.83 seconds. Her speed, 234 miles an hour. And Shirley advances into the semifinals of the Cajun Nationals. The engine started in the next pair of cars. Gary Beck from El Toro, California, will be racing against Oregon's own Jim Bernard. After her first round win, Steve Evans has had a chance to catch up to Shirley Muldowney and ask her about the next round. If you had your choice in the next round, who would you rather race, Jeb Allen or Lucille Lee? Obviously, Steve, Shirley doesn't care. She has confidence in her own ability and in her own car. But now, all eyes are directed to the starting line as Gary Beck, finishing number two in the world last season, will be racing Portland, Oregon's Jim Bernard on the national championship trail for the first full season. Bernard from Portland has qualified very well at this race. You came in here on Friday, the north wind, and blew strong, number two qualifier, and then you've just been kind of hiding back here. We haven't seen you on the starting line. That's right, Steve. We've uh, ran real good. We haven't hurt many parts. We're in a position right now that we want to stay. We're number two. Uh, we won't run either Lucille or Shirley until the final round. Uh, we feel that uh, out of the race, they are the ones that are going to give us the best race all day long. The number two qualifier, Jim Bernard, very confident against Gary Beck. And a red light start for Gary Beck. Jim Bernard automatically wins this race. Disregard what you see. The race was decided at the starting line as Gary Beck left the red light glowing, indicating he left that starting line just a hair too soon. As we watch again, you can see Beck perceptibly ahead of the green light. And that's what cost him that race. Jim Bernard, the upset winner over Gary Beck. Dave Gary Beck was unaware that he red lighted until he was told down here, so you weren't gambling, really. No, really. I, th I saw yellow, but uh, the staging light was blanking, so I must have backed out of it or something. <laughs> a little overstaged or something. Yeah, it wasn't clicking just right, so I don't know. You always got a very fine light, though. You're going to red light once in a while. <laughs> I guess so. Well, Gary Beck, uh, obviously very disappointed. He won this race a couple of years ago. Would like to have done it again. This man also a Cajun Nationals winner. He is the defending top fuel champion, Jeb Allen, the reigning world champion. But he's got his problems here at the seventh annual Cajun Nationals event. He comes to this race with a brand new car. One of the most difficult things is to get a new car sorted out at a championship event. A brand new race car, not even painted yet. That's the mount for defending champ here at the Cajuns, Jeb Allen. Why would you take a chance of building a new car when your old car took you to the world championship? Well, Steve, at the end of the year, our performance was falling off. All the competitors had gotten brand new cars, and the racetracks were being prepared so much better by NHRA. We found ourselves behind the eight ball, more or less. We took and we, we relieved this car quite a bit by moving the motor four inches out from the, the rear wheels to here is four inches farther out than the driver's four more inches out. Then we put the fuel tank up on the front axle. What does that do? That, that changes the weight distribution, the amount of traction you get. It makes the motor not have to make as much horsepower. Possibly not have to work as hard to accomplish the same thing. It's like having 10 pounds of weight and you carry it around all day, or you carry 30 pounds of weight around all day. Well, Jeb Allen had a lot of work just to make this eight-car final field. At the Cajun Nationals, each car allotted four qualifying attempts. It took all four of them for Jeb Allen to make the field. Here, under the darkness on the late Saturday night, we see the last qualifying attempt by Jeb Allen, and this is the run that put him into the Cajun Nationals program. Jeb Allen, his brand new car, the defending Cajun Nationals champion, with lots of work for him here, both in qualifying and in this race, because he is racing one of the hottest new stars in all of drag racing, Lucille Lee. Lucille driving a top fuel car for her first full season in competition one year ago was a secretary. Now she is driving this 2,500 horsepower car. She has already won a major NHRA championship event this season and is regarded by many as one of the hottest drivers on the circuit. Jeb Allen, the reigning world champion, the defending champ, has got his work cut out for him. Can he accomplish a first round win? Both cars set to go, 
and it is Lucille Lee losing traction. She almost loses control. Can she hold on to the lead? She does. It is Lucille Lee. 5.97 seconds in a brilliant driving exhibition. Lucille Lee overcomes the loss of traction. As we watch again, she passes the Christmas tree. Jeb Allen side by side. And there, the car losing traction starts to go out of control. Lucille corrects the car, brings it back into a straight line and continues to pull ahead of Jeb Allen. As they reach the finish line, 1,320 feet away by a half a car length, Lucille Lee takes the win. You know what happens next? Yeah. The race everyone's been waiting for for a long time, you and Shirley. Well, she's, she'll be tough to beat. And she's got lane choice, and uh, I don't know what to say. Okay, we're looking forward to it. We'll see history here at the Cajun Nationals in the semifinals as for the first time in national competition, two women race in top fuel eliminator. Coming up next at the seventh annual Cajun Nationals Championship, we'll get started with the fantastic funny cars. Baton Rouge, Louisiana, home of the Cajun Nationals at State Capitol Dragway. I'm Dave McClelland, along with Steve Evans. The temperatures are in the 90s, and you can hear the engines running as we get ready to go with funny car racing. One of the new developments in drag racing is the use of nitrous oxide. A number of funny car racers are starting to experiment and develop the use of nitrous oxide. Steve is talking with one of them right now. In the unlikely event anyone should ever ask you what your dentist's office and a double-A fuel funny car have in common, you can tell them this, nitrous oxide. The same stuff your dentist used to make you feel a little more comfortable in the chair, laughing gas. Kenny Bernstein has been used for years in airplanes and race boats and even race cars. Push a button, get hundreds more horsepower. You don't need more horsepower, do you? Well, sometimes we do, Steve, but uh, as you say, pushing a button used to be the answer to all those things. You go down through there, push it, and get a lot of horsepower and go faster, but no one's perfected in the funny car ranks in that manner. What we're trying to do is flow the nitrous oxide to all eight cylinders on the starting line, which keeps those cylinders alive and lit and not dropping them, which means you would run on seven or six cylinders. If you've got eight healthy cylinders, and we do with the nitrous oxide, then we automatically go faster. Nitrous oxide means a cleaner burning engine for Kenny Bernstein. David? Steve, our first pair of cars, we find Gary Bergen and Dale Paldi, neither of which are using nitrous oxide at this event. Paldi drives the Ward Eagle. For Gary Bergen, he sits behind the wheel of his own car called the Orange Baron. Bergen out of Stanton, California, a former national champion. Dale Paldi, also a winner several times on the NHRA championship trail with a car that is regarded almost as a work of art. This, the fabulous War Eagle. Car owner Mike Hamby climbing under the back of the car. There may be some problems. The crew coming in, starting to get underneath that car. We're looking as Mike Hamby is changing the setting on the wheelie bars. These are the cars that help keep the car under control should it go into a wheel stand. Dale Paldi, the driver, deciding they didn't like it where it was. He got his crew chief and car owner, Mike Hamby, to change the angle of those wheelie bars, allowing the car to come up even less off the starting line. For Gary Bergen, he has no problems. All he's doing is sitting very patiently and waiting while all the work's been done on the Ward Eagle. A great race. But something goes wrong for Paldi, and it is Gary Bergen. His elapsed time, 6.19 seconds, a roaring 243 miles an hour as he eliminates Dale Paldi and the Ward Eagle. The electric starter hooked up to the 2,500 horsepower engine of Al Sagrini as the fiberglass body is lowered over the tubular chassis as he gets set to go for his round of racing against the reigning world champion, Raymond Beetle, his car coming to life. Raymond using nitrous oxide on the famed Blue Max. Steve is caught up with Dale Poldi. What went wrong? Dale Poldi, a great move up the starting line, then nothing. <laughs> That's about what happened. The fuel shut off lever uh, vibrated loose. Fuel shut off, just shut the fuel off on the thing. When I felt the engine just die, I shut, just shut the throttle off completely. One of those $2 part failures. That's about it. 
a tough break for Dale Pauly, but now no one is thinking about that. They're concentrating on the next race. It is Easton, Massachusetts, Al Segrini, the winner of the Winter Nationals Championship, as he checks over his engine to get ready to go. Segrini will be faced with the defending world champion three times in a row, Raymond Beadle. His famous Blue Max uses nitrous oxide, and he qualified number two. I, even though you weren't the first to run 250 and you didn't qualify number one, you've got a perfect point from which to attack in the ladder number two, maybe the best spot in the ladder. Well, we kind of looked at that running that last run last night because we thought uh, if we were number one, it, that was good because we'd pick up the Pioneer money and, and the Budweiser bonus, but also we'd have to run Billy Myers probably second round, so look at the draw is we were better off where we are. You stay away from Iran for Dome until the final if you get that far. That's right. A lot of psychology and planning going into even qualifying for one of these championship events as the Blue Max carries the big number one on the side of the car, indicating it is the defending and reigning world champion. He qualified number two right behind Don Prudhomme. Al Segrini, winner of the Winter Nationals out in Pomona, California earlier this year, knows what it takes to beat Raymond Beadle. He hopes he has it here at the Cajun Nationals. A lot of time being spent uh, getting these two cars to the starting line. There's not to seem to be any intentional psychological battle between the two. Just taking their good sweet time and concentrating on that green light. And it's a great start for Raymond Beadle. Something going wrong for Segrini. But Beadle flies through the quarter mile. 6.05 seconds. His speed, 241 miles an hour. For Al Segrini, his racing day is over here at the Cajun Nationals. He coasts to a stop if something goes wrong. Raymond Beadle turning off to go back to the pits to get ready for the next round. And here is the number one qualifier, the Pontiac Firebird, the brand new car for Don Prudhomme, the fastest man in history at 250 miles an hour. Dave, Raymond Beadle came out of the car and said, was that a five? It was a 6.05. Okay, well, I knew it run pretty good. I thought it might have been a high five. It shook a little at the top of low gear, though. All the rods are still in it and all the parts still attached. It's a new motor, so I think we'll be all right. Let me ask you something. We'll get a shot of it. What is this on your helmet, right? It's a microphone. We're fixing to put a new deal in the car so we can start talking back and forth today on them. Because, like the other day, we had a little oil leak in the pan stump, and I could see it, and he couldn't see it. And we're just having a little trouble sometimes with just hand signal communicating. Maybe we'll kind of make a step forward. A little indie racing comes to drag race. Well, we'll try it anyway. Okay, you've got Poldy next round. Okay, that's right. right, Kirk. We'll be all right. Continued innovations from Raymond Beadle and the Blue Max. Coming to a shaking stop after his burnout is Johnny Pott, the driver of the car owned by Larry Kugel. They call it the Sting. Here's the man that qualified number one and set a new national speed record of over 250 miles an hour, Don Prudhomme. You would think that Prudhomme in that number one spot at six seconds flat is very confident going into this first round race. Well, on paper, looking at the ladder sheet, it's uh, Raymond Beadle, Billy Meyer, the cars to beat, but you've got a tough one in the first round. They're all tough. Huh. You know, you better believe they're tough. They're qualified out here. They're plenty tough. Uh, you know, I've been in this position before. This isn't my first time, and uh, I know what it's like. You're sitting on low 18 and have a, a dark horse come up and put you away. Uh, you don't want to think that way, but those things can happen. But I'm out there to run my own race. I feel real good. I ate a good breakfast, and uh, I'm ready. We hope the good breakfast pays off for Don Bruno as he comes up against Johnny Pot. This is the first round of racing here at the Cajun Nationals. Prudhomme has already established the record at 250 miles an hour. The first man ever over that magic 250 mark in a funny car. It's Johnny Pot and Prudhomme off together. Pot holding his own at this point. And Prudhomme pulls away at the finish with a tremendous charge at the end at 242 miles an hour. But real problems for Johnny Pot in the sting. He spins it out in the shutdown area of the car on fire. The NHRA safety safari crew immediately on the scene spraying it with water. The emergency hatch opens. Here comes Pot trying to climb out of the car. The safety crewman wearing the fire protective gear. He is out of the car. He's apparently, he's standing up. He is okay. It is Johnny Pot nodding to the safety man. He is all right. He walks away from the car. We watch again. You see Prudhomme has a tremendous the smoke starts out of the car, then comes the fire. Pot is now inside that car. It is blazing away. The parachute behind it burns off at that point. He starts to lose control. Pot begins to waver from side to side as the flames lick from behind the car. Pot throws the car into a spin in the shutdown area. 
spins it out and comes to a stop. Johnny Pot doing a masterful driving job, keeping it under control on the pavement. Steve, what's going on now? David, as you saw, the John Pot driven car just exploded just past the finish line. We are on the scene right now. And uh, as you can see, the car is sizzling and popping. We're looking right now for John Pot. And uh, don't see him. There he is. In the orange shirt is John Pot, the black fire suit. He is OK. Got a quick check from one of the members of the emergency crew. But as you can see, there is oil all over the place. We'll try to get a word with Johnny Pot if we can. John? <clears throat> first of all, you all right? Sure, just fine. Just fine. A little, got a little hot in there for a minute, but I'm all right. That's your first fire. Uh, yeah, it is. It's is it really? Yeah, it is. After a career like yours? Very first fire. Well, that's amazing. I've been careful. Oh, I'll say. What happened? I uh, got out about eight, 800 foot and it uh, kicked some rods out of it and, you know, get in all that oil and she smears oil over the hot motor, you know, it gets on fire. So when you break rods, that punches holes in the pan, the oil escapes, the headers yeah. light it on fire, and there you go. Yeah, those headers are cherry, cherry red. You can't see with the body down, but in the lights, they're, they're cherry red. The oil hits them and... Well, I mean, a few years ago, with all of the safety stands we have now, you might not have walked away from this. Oh, exactly. Absolutely. The safety that's involved in the sport now is, uh, I mean, it's, you, you can't put it into words. The hole in the side of the engine, a very expensive explosion for Johnny Pot and Larry Kugel. As they clean up the track here at Baton Rouge, Trip Shoemake and Billy Meyer getting ready to go at the Cajun Nationals. This is Heather Shoemake. And this is her daddy, Trip Shoemake, getting ready for the final race of the first round of Funny Car Eliminations. Trip Shoemake from Phoenix, Arizona. His competition, Billy Meyer from Waco, Texas. Billy, number three qualifier here, will be racing against Trip and the brand new car of Johnny Loper. Trip Shoemake, first race with a new car. How does it feel to you so far? I'll tell you, I'm not really, uh, not really comfortable in it yet. It's kind of like I've rode the other car four years, and this one, everybody put the steering wheel in the wrong place, and the brake handle's not where it's supposed to be. I've never really, haven't really felt comfortable in it yet, to tell you the truth. Do you have to uh, tune the motor differently for a new car? Yeah, the motor's in a different place in this car, and the chassis is a little stiffer, and we're still kind of wandering around where to tune it. And besides having a donkey driver like me, it's kind of hard to get the car tuned up just right. Again, the very difficult job of sorting out a brand new car at an NHRA championship event and some problems over there with Billy Meyer's car. They've got the body up. Now it goes back down, the engine's still running. The crew moves out of the way and Billy starts to approach the starting line. Meantime, Trip Shoemake continuing his burnout procedures. They're still having problems with Billy Meyer's car. The crew jumping on top of the hood area right behind the supercharger. And apparently it's okay. The starting line crews looked it over. They said, bring it to the line. So we've got the final race. This is the first round of Funny Car Eliminations at the Cajun Nationals. Trip Shoemake in the near lane. Billy Meyer in the far lane. And they got the problem sorted out for Meyer. How about the new car of Trip Shoemake? And he has a big lead off the starting line. But it is Billy Meyer wins it at the finish. An outstanding 6.09 second elapsed time. His speed, 244 miles an hour. For Trip Shoemake, 6.21 seconds. As we watch again, you can see the big lead that's built up by Trip Shoemake over Billy Meyer off the starting line. But at the finish line, it's exactly the opposite. As we see Billy Meyer coming on strong to win by half a car length over Trip Shoemake. Steve Evans has had a chance to catch up with Billy Meyer. Billy Meyer, anxious moments on the starting line. We had a fuel leak. You can see the window. I can't even see out the right side of the window there, Steve. I didn't uh, really know what it was. And you're in the car, and you can't relate anything to the guys. Luckily, Denny Martinez looked like he saw what it was and apparently fixed it some because it wasn't anywhere near as bad on the run as it was before that. Fine job of driving. It sounded like you had to get off the throttle once or twice. We lifted once. What did we run? 609. Oh, perfect. We had lane choice. Billy Meyer did a fine job of driving under difficult circumstances. He certainly did, Steve. And there on the windshield of his car, you can see the residue left by the fuel coming out from behind the supercharger onto the windshield of that funny car. Coming out now, the factory hot rods. This is Pro Stock Eliminator semi-final round. And the world champion, Lee Shepard, driving the Chevrolet Camaro of Rare and Morrison, will be racing the former world champion, Bob Glidden, He's been down on his luck the past couple of seasons. 
in those glory years as world champion, whenever you race Shepard, it was always you saying to Shepard, catch me if you can. It's uh, The tables have turned. Sure have. I've been chasing him for a couple of years now. He's been beating me pretty bad. Uh, we picked up a little bit here today, it seems, and uh, he slowed down a little, so looks like we're within about a half a tenth, uh, five hundredths. If we, 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 we're going for broke this run. We're, we're going to try some off-the-wall stuff, and we're either going to be in the ballpark or way out, so we're, we'll have to wait and see. Years before, it was always uh, me trying to leave on him because he always had the ET on us, and uh, now we're running a little quicker, so he's going to have to get the whole shot this time. The classic Chevrolet versus Ford battle. The Camaro driven by Lee Shepard, the brand new Ford EXP of Bob Glidden. They're ready, and a red light for Bob Glidden, and the win automatically to Lee Shepard. 500 cubic inch engines pulling these cars to the finish line, and it is Lee Shepard winning it. 7.91 seconds, 173 miles an hour. As we see, it was just a momentary too soon for Bob Glidden. That's what gave him the red light and the win to Lee Shepard. Moving into the finals here at the Cajun Nationals, Lee Shepard, he'll be racing one of these two competitors. Warren Johnson at the wheel of the Oldsmobile Starfire against the bright yellow Camaro of Frank Iaconio. Warren Johnson from Fridley, Minnesota drives the Starfire Oldsmobile while Frank Iaconio, finishing number three in the world last season, is at the wheel of his trusty Camaro. All cars running with a 500 cubic inch maximum, 2,350 pounds is the weight. Warren Johnson just a little bit sideways off the starting line, giving a big advantage to Frank Iancono. He takes it. You can see Warren Johnson has his hands full as the parachute comes out, but he comes to a safe slowing stop as Frank Iaconio wins that round at 7.94 seconds. In addition to the professional categories that have been racing here at the Cajun Nationals, in sportsman competition, we have seen a number of first-time winners. In Stock Eliminator, 19-year-old James Cairo out of Homa, Louisiana, took home his first ever NHRA national event win, defeating Billy Joe Moravitz. In Super Stock Eliminator, from Piedmont, Alabama, Sonny Ray defeating James Lee. Super Gas Eliminator found Katie Texas Ray Martell, a 39-year-old mechanic, winning his first major title against Charles Phillips in Competition Eliminator, the alternate of Danny Townsend defeating David Cook. Pro Comp Eliminator saw Buddy Domain from Groves, Texas, winning his first ever national event title. The 29-year-old defeated Gary Henderson's funny car from Memphis, Tennessee. Our congratulations to all the sportsman champions here at the Cajun Nationals, who in addition to some hard racing, have been enjoying some great food. Crawfish, red rice and beans, hush puppies. Half the fun of this race, David, is sampling the great Louisiana food. I just got me a plate of jambalaya, and I'll tell you, it is delicious. And when you talk jambalaya in this part of Louisiana, you're talking about this man they call Shake. Shake, what is in this jambalaya? We have chicken and sausage, rice, you know, celery, bell peppers, and I guess about 21 different things that we put in it, you know, seasonings. How long does it take to cook it all in this huge pot? Uh, this 100-gallon pot takes six and a half hours. You got a bigger pot than this? Oh, yes, I have 350-gallon pots. Well, how many people will that feed? Uh, twin, uh, a little over 2,700 people. Now, the Cajun fans here, they love this. How about to the West Coasters, the people from up north? How do they react to Jambalaya? Hey, they're going wild over our food. Is that right? Yes, sir. They love, you know, they're coming in here. We're selling it to We have a lot of people, you know, from the West Coast talking about our foods, you know, and, they, they, you know, they're really eating it up. All right. Well, you may have to cook up another pot. Why don't you hold this microphone? i got to eat this. Oh, boy, this is some big piece of sausage right here, huh? Oh, yeah. Man. Go ahead. Get right on the column. Yeah, a little chicken over here. Yeah, we have chicken here. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. At State Capitol Dragway near Baton Rouge, Louisiana, I'm Dave McClelland along with Steve Evans, and we're set for the semifinals of Funny Card Eliminator. We'll see Don Prudhomme against Billy Meyer as one of these two cars will move into the finals and a shot at the Cajun Nationals title. Billy Meyer has his work cut out for him, though. His competition, Don Prudhomme, has already set a new national speed record of over 250 miles an hour. The burnouts are completed by both drivers. 
All the concentration now put on the electronic starting device known as a Christmas tree. The cars inch forward into the light beams across the starting line. The switch is thrown, the green light comes on, and up in smoke goes Billy Meyer. Don Prudhomme streaks for the finish line. 6.10 is elapsed time, 246 miles an hour, his speed at the end of the quarter mile. And for Waco, Texas, Billy Meyer, his day of racing is over because the car lost traction right off the starting line. You saw Billy try to recover, he was unable to do so, and Don Prudhomme moves into the finals. 6'10", 243, Snake. That's not real good. <laughs> you know, uh, it might sound pretty decent, but we need to run a little bit harder than that to whip with Beetle right now, I think. The tower tells me you're really tuned up. Your driving, your reaction was dead on. Yeah, well, I was a little late last time. I had to make up for it. Meyer's no fool. Well, here we... Yes, I'm sorry. That's okay. No big... Now, on the starting line, Raymond Beetle, the Blue Max, he told me in the lanes that he is really going to step on it and go for lane choice. Oh, yes, yeah. Raymond's tough, and so is Myers, but, you know, every round's a new round, so it's going to be interesting. <laughs> All right, let's go back to David on the starting line and find out who will race Don Perdome in the final round. Steve, this is the first time since last August that Don Prudhomme has made it into the finals of an NHRA national event. He will be running one of these two racers, either the Orange Baron of Gary Bergen from Stanton, California, or the famed Blue Max. That's Raymond Beetle, the reigning world champion. Bergen creeping forward into the water, getting set for his burnout at the rear of the car. You see the two parachute packs. Bergen is one that believes in double safety. If one parachute doesn't function, he's still got another one to help bring him to a stop after his 240 mile an hour run. Raymond Beadle qualified number two here at the Cajun Nationals, and in this semifinal round, Gary Bergen has a tough chore. We asked him about it. Uh, you're racing Beadle. Do you hope that he just makes a mistake and you run your own race, or are you going to pump it up and try to match ETs with him? Well, I think we've learned in the long run that it's better to get down the racetrack and let him beat you. Or and beat himself. Absolutely. You know, in other words, if you smoke the tires or something breaks on your car, then you beat yourself. If you get down the racetrack, then he's got to beat you, regardless of how he does it. So Gary Bergen has his plan figured out as to how to beat Raymond Beetle. Raymond Beetle is trying to figure out how can he advance past Gary Bergen and meet Don Prudhomme in the final. Raymond Beetle and the Blue Max crew, some of the most innovative people in drag racing today. As we know, he is using the new developed, newly developed nitrous oxide systems on the Blue Max. The Ford EXP body nestling around that 2,500 horsepower engine. As he talked with Steve Evans a bit earlier, you saw the utilization of a two-way radio system between the driver and the crew chief, Dale Emery. Constant improvement of these very exotic race cars. They weigh about 1,800 pounds with 2,500 horsepower, and it's a red light for Gary Bergen. He shuts it off, he beat himself, and it is Raymond Beetle and the Blue Max in the finals of the Cajun Nationals against Don Prudhomme, and he will have lane choice. 6.03 seconds for Raymond Beetle. Here is the top fuel semifinal round that everybody's been waiting for. The two premier women race drivers in the world today, Shirley Muldowney against Lucille Lee. One of them will be in the finals. Steve, what's Raymond got to say? Mission accomplished for Raymond Beetle. You wanted lane choice, you got it. 603 to Perdome 610. Good. I mean, that could be critical. We were going to take the left lane. We looked at it, you know, because they scraped it the round before. And Billy and I both talked about it, and we thought maybe the left lane was a little bit better watching Shirley, but then when Billy smoked the tires, we elected to go in and switch lanes, not even taking a chance. How long has it been since you raced Perdome in a final? I know, Indy in 75. <laughs> I remember I that. don't know. Well, we've run several times in California. Then we've run in Ontario and uh, Columbus one year when we blew the body off. So we've run, we've had some good finals. The eyes of a champion, Shirley Muldowney, as she gets herself prepared for her semifinal race against Lucille Lee. Holding the brake pedal as they start the 2,500 horsepower engine. Muldowney has a chance to look down the racetrack and maybe reflect just a little bit on a long career that has been a difficult one, but oh, so fruitful. The only person ever to win 
The Top Fuel World Championship, two times. Shirley Mulvaney fought her way to the top, coming up through the stock cars, top gas dragsters. She drove a funny car for a while, then advancing into the Top Fuel Eliminator category and has won 11 NHRA national titles. You know, Shirley, I can recall in the early days of your career, uh, you requested the other drivers always so as think of me as a lady that drives a race car, not a lady race car driver. Can can you think that way uh, as you race Lucille about her? Yeah, she she's a lady and she's a race car driver. Uh, I'm just going to consider it just another driver, the way I do everyone. Uh, you just can't let any driver bother you or any particular car because it, it'll bite you down the road. You're not thinking about what you should be thinking about. You raced Shirley once before, an independent race, a final round, and you beat her, and you ran very well, but still it wasn't for the world championship, and this could be. Uh, yeah, it is, this is a national event, and I'm looking forward to it. I need the points. Uh, it's a little different than Bakersfield. Yes, it really is. Uh, my car was running awful good at Bakersfield, and of course she knows why she lost, and I know why I won. My car just flat out ran hers. You know, that's... Uh, you can't really say there's, there's driver expertise and something like that. She's got a whole lot more experience than I do. So I think that's... I feel that's how it's going to be out here tonight, today. If I beat, then my car just flat out ran hers because she's an excellent driver. The ladies in the stands can't lose this one. They sure can't. <laughs> the only way that Lucille Lee can gain that experience is to do just what she's got to do, race against Shirley Muldowney here at the Cajun Nationals. Car owner Mark Danicus checking everything over at the last moment to make sure all is right with the car. For Shirley Muldowney, her crew of Ron Tobler and her son, John Muldowney, doing exactly the same thing, making sure that this 250-mile-an-hour charger is ready to go. The two leading females in motorsports matched here in the semifinals at the Cajun Nationals. The last minute, nod of the head and a tip to Shirley as she begins the preparation for this run by creeping into those staging beams. Will the years of experience for Shirley Muldowney pay off? We'll find out. And a great hole shot for Shirley Muldowney. Up in smoke goes Lucille Lee. And that's the way Shirley Muldowney wins the semifinal round against Lucille Lee. Her elapsed time, 5.98 seconds. Her speed, only 226 miles an hour. Here you see it. And there's the advantage right off the starting line. Shirley Muldowney pulling the whole shot on Lucille Lee, who also lost traction. Steve? Well, I think you both underplayed it a little bit. It was quite a confrontation. It's gone now. You were the victor. You did it on a whole shot, that experience again. Well, it just, you know, we all get lucky once in a while. Uh, Lucille's got a few years yet, but she's done wonderful. She's the best I've seen to ever come along. That's right. Bar none. I mean, she, the rest of the girls that have been here and gone, I mean, she makes them look silly. A great compliment to Lucille Lee from a great champion. Here is the sentimental hometown favorite. They come from Houma, Louisiana, which is just about 40, 45 miles down the road. The team of Paul Candies and Leonard Hughes with their new driver this year, Mark Oswald, into the semifinals against Portland, Oregon's Jim Bernard in the North win. Both cars are ready. And a great start. Oh, what a race as Oswald starts to lose control, comes back into the groove and wins it. Over Jim Bernard, 593, 245 miles an hour for the blue machine of Candies and Hughes. And as we watch again, you see they both got off the starting line side by side, starting to lose traction just a bit was Oswald, but he recovered quick enough to win by half a car length. He was slower, indicating he had a whole shot off the line over Jim Bernard. Steve? By Mark Oswald in the blue car from the Bayou here in Louisiana. You've been needing a whole shot here lately. You just got one when it counted. Yeah, we've been a little bit. Everybody and his brothers jumped on us, but I think things are turning around for us a little bit now. Looks that way. When you run a 93 to an 88, you have had to be an alert. Yeah, I'm happy about that. A lot of fans supporting this car in the stands. Yeah, Paul would really like to win one right here at home. Oh, I'll bet he would. And uh, you're going to face Shirley Muldowney. You've got lane choice. Yeah, I think that'll make a little bit of difference. Our car was loose this time pretty bad. All right, so if you can get the clutch figured out and keep it glued down, it could be quite a final. Yeah, I hope so. Okay, good luck to you. Thank you, Steve. 
Mark Oswald against Shirley Baldowney in the finals here at the Cajun Nationals in Top Fuel Eliminator. Meantime, action in the pits as they get set for the finals of Funny Car Racing. The finals at the Cajun Nationals in Pro Stock Eliminator, a pair of Chevrolets. From Totowa, New Jersey, comes 35-year-old Frank Iaconio. He's racing against the reigning world champion, 37-year-old Lee Shepard from Arlington, Texas. Both professional racers, both in 1981 Camaros, 500 cubic inch engines, two four-barrel carburetors running on gasoline. The best at the Cajun Nationals, Lee Shepard and Frank Iaconio, who will win the title? Off the starting line, they leave together, and it is Lee Shepard beginning to pull away. And he does, by a car length, win the Cajun Nationals title, 7.90 at 173 miles an hour. As we watch again, you see the two cars leave the line side by side, but then the rare and Morrison Camaro pulls it out by a car length at the finish line to give Lee Shepard the Cajun Nationals title. Well, with any luck, Lee Shepard will continue uh, to meet like this at the far end of racetracks all over the country as we did at the World Finals. The world champion wins another one. Well, thank you, Steve. I hope we continue this. Uh, <laughs> we just really had a lot of luck and things been going good for us today. 790 to a 793. He's tough. Yeah, he is. He's uh, always tough, and I'm sure he'll continue to be. The showdown in Funny Car Eliminator. Raymond Beadle, the reigning world champion for three consecutive years, has held that title against Don Prudhoe. From 1975 to 1978, Don Prudhoe won four consecutive world champion titles, dominating Funny Car Racing like no other man until Raymond Beadle came along. But the thoughts are not on world championships now. They're concentrating on the Cajun Nationals win. The number one qualifier, Don Prudhoe. The number two qualifier, Raymond Beadle. Who will win it? And it is Raymond Beadle pulling away at the finish. 6.08 seconds his elapsed time. His speed, 239 miles an hour. And what a close race. This is what funny car racing is all about. As Don Prudhoe valiantly trying to catch the streaking Raymond Beadle. But he doesn't as Raymond Beadle defeating the snake for the funny car title. All right, Raymond Beadle gets his sock off. Prudhoe comes over, gives him a handshake, said, what we run? Raymond Beadle is 6.08. You are the Cajun Nationals champ. Well, we won once before, so hopefully they say things come in three. This is Atlanta, uh, Bristol, and here, so maybe it'll come in fours. <laughs> <laughs> well, you burned it a little bit, but who cares at this point, right? You're well, you here got, to win. You got to sacrifice for the snake. I mean, he don't come easy. I mean, anyone that runs him knows that. In fact, anytime someone asks me who's my most feared competitor, I always say him because everyone says, where's he been? He's been right here. In the top fuel final, we find the rising young star matched against the crafty veteran. In three years of professional race car driving, 29-year-old Mark Oswald has now made it into his first ever NHRA final. He looks over at his competition, 41-year-old Shirley Maldowney. She's got to be the favorite coming into this race. She holds low elapsed time. She is the number one qualifier, but can she beat Mark Oswald? A great race off the starting line. Shirley's built up a bit of a lead. Can she hold on? But no, here comes Mark Oswald, and look, the tire flew off the right front wheel. Mark Oswald's got the car under control. Paul Candy's congratulating his crew as Mark Oswald, at over 252 miles an hour, wins his first ever NHRA title. Side by side at that point, Shirley Muldowney and Mark Oswald, but at the finish line, it's all Mark Oswald. Your first NHRA National Event victory. Congratulations. Thanks, Lance, Steve. Yeah. I'm just really happy to win here at home for Paul and everybody. Oh, they're pretty happy, too. Oh, did, you, did you think you were going that fast? Yeah, two Thank blues you, in the final. Two, two blues in the final. Raymond Beadle, the funny car champion, joining Mark Oswald. It was, it was really getting with it down there. When it threw the tire off, I had a good idea. Did you ever see Shirley down the racetrack? Yeah, she was out on me a little bit in low gear, I think. You know, it was real even for a while, and then in, when I shifted it, I just got out on her a little bit. It was a really good race. And a great race it was here at the Cajun Nationals. Our Diamond P. Congratulations to all the champions.
We hope you've enjoyed all the exciting action from the Cajun Nationals. For Steve Evans, I'm Dave McClellan saying so long from Baton Rouge.